Several days ago, I found this extremely pregnant female guppy sitting at the bottom of one of my guppy breeding tanks. She was alive and breathing, but obviously exhausted and just barely able to move. Despite her distress, she was surrounded by a group of persistent male guppies, all still eagerly vying for a chance to mate with her. I used a small net to guide her into a large deli container filled with water from the breeding tank. In an effort to help keep her stress levels at a minimum, I covered the container with a small towel to help keep the water warm and to minimize any further disturbances. Next, I filled a five-gallon aquarium with water from the breeding tank, added a heater, a small sponge filter, and some guppy grass. This aquarium would serve as a hospital tank, and if everything turned out okay, it would also serve as a maternity ward. I kept the light on the tank off and covered it with a towel to help minimize any undue stress coming from outside of the aquarium. I wasn't certain that she would make it, but I knew that I had to try and help. Thankfully, a few hours later I looked in on her and she was up and swimming. At first, I was concerned that she might have a sickness known as dropsy, which is a condition where the body retains fluids and then begins to swell to an abnormal size. The swelling pushes against the internal organs as well as the scales, causing them to lift away from the body and take on the appearance of a pine cone. After a close inspection, I determined that her scales were not lifting away from her body, and other than her swollen appearance and her obvious discomfort, she appeared to be doing okay. I also thought that she might be constipated, so I tried to feed her a green pea, which is supposed to help, but she refused to eat. I was somewhat comforted by the fact that other than her labored breathing, she seemed to be doing okay now that she had a tank all to herself. I added aquarium-safe salt to the water to help draw out some of the excess fluids that may have been putting pressure on her internal organs. Then, nearly three days after I found her sitting almost lifeless at the bottom of the aquarium, she began to have her babies. And right from the beginning, it was obvious that she was having trouble giving birth. Female guppies who are subjected to stressful situations, such as the one she was in just a few days ago, can delay the delivery of their babies or even expel developing embryos long before they're fully formed. She struggles to release several partially developed eggs, and each of them seems to require an enormous amount of time and effort. But there's nothing more that I can do to help her, so I watch and wait, hoping for the best. Here she is, nearly 14 hours after delivering her first baby, and she's still giving birth. Normally, the process only takes a few hours. I am now beginning to notice that she's starting to develop what's known as a genital prolapse, which is a condition where the lining of their genital tract begins to protrude from the body. This type of prolapse can be caused by excessive straining in an effort to pass eggs or babies through the birth canal. And once a genital prolapse develops, it becomes even more difficult for her to give birth due to the additional effort required to push the babies past the prolapse. Here we can see a baby guppy with its tail sticking out of the genital opening. Guppies have three openings just under the anal fin. There's one opening for passing urine, one for reproduction, and one for passing feces. When there's a blockage in their digestive tract, guppies can develop an anal prolapse, and when there's a blockage in the reproductive tract, they can develop a genital prolapse. Watch closely as the mother guppy pulls the prolapse back into her body as she prepares to give birth to another baby. With the prolapse pulled in as far as possible, this tired mother fish gives one final squeeze to try and push the baby out. And now, let's reverse the film so that we can see it again. In this scene, if you look closely, you can see one of her unborn babies moving inside the prolapse. 
If she was in a tank with other fish, they would probably start biting at it, which could cause a permanent injury. So if your fish happens to develop this condition, it's always best to provide it with a tank of its own. If this female had remained in her former home, constantly being bothered by male guppies, she would most certainly have died. I'm glad that I found her when I did. Unfortunately, most of her babies were not so lucky. They weren't fully developed, and none of them survived for more than a few hours. Thankfully, their mother made it through the ordeal, and the prolapse corrected itself once she was done giving birth. She's now on a temporary maternity leave in a tank of her own until she's able to give birth without any complications. The death of one of our aquatic friends is sad, but it's an inevitable part of the fish-keeping hobby, and sometimes, despite our best efforts, there are many things beyond our control. The best that we can do as responsible fish keepers is to learn as much as possible about the creatures under our care and give them the best treatment that we can. Here, a spotted ramshorn snail takes advantage of the unfortunate situation and begins to feed on one of the baby guppies. Be sure to keep a close eye on the yolk sac. I'm not sure why this mother guppy was near death when I found her. The other guppies in the tank where she came from were all healthy and active. The water was warm and clean and all of the water parameters were well within an acceptable range. The guppies are provided with a high quality diet and I'm always very careful not to overfeed them. And as you can see here, there are far more females in this breeding colony than there are males, so it was not an issue with an improper sex ratio, which, by the way, when keeping guppies, there should be two to three females for each male. It's also important whenever possible to avoid moving a pregnant mother guppy. Set up your guppy tank so that you don't need to move the females in order to keep the babies from being eaten by the other fish. I don't recommend putting a pregnant mother guppy in one of those tiny breeder boxes, and if you do, don't leave her in there for more than a day or two at the most. Unless it's done correctly, those tiny breeder boxes can do more harm than good. If you really need to remove one of the females, it's best to do it when she's just beginning to get a rounded abdomen. Then put her in a separate, fully cycled maternity tank containing a sponge filter and lots of plants. The more plants, the better. And then, once she's done having the babies, remember to give her a few days to rest before putting her back into the breeding tank. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you saw some things you've never seen before and learned some things you didn't know. And, as always, thank you for your time.